The following true story took place in an old farmhouse on Brickyard Road, North Woodstock, Connecticut, in 1951. The farmhouse had been built in pre-revolutionary times by the Lyon family, who initially used it as a tavern and received many customers as it were located on the busy Boston Hartford Road. Eventually the tavern changed hands and was owned by the Potters, then Redheads, Ides and then the Duprees. By the time the Duprees owned the house it contained 16 rooms, but it was now a private dwelling and no longer a tavern. At one time the Duprees family had suffered a tragedy when the mother had to take some neighbour's children to school, which was located less than a mile from their property. Emery Dupree had decided to leave her 14-year-old daughter at home, as she was feeling unwell. Mrs. Dupree had not been away for very long, but when she returned, had found her daughter missing, and after much searching, was never seen again. She had disappeared without a trace. Over the years, the farmhouse became dilapidated and was in much need of a makeover. In 1951, a couple by the name of Florence and Charles Viner decided to purchase the farmhouse and despite its terrible condition believed they could restore it as they needed a large country house and were ready for a challenge. On Good Friday of that year they moved into the house and immediately set to work knowing full well that the next few months would be difficult for them. After they'd been there for only two months Mrs Viner and 11 year old daughter Sandra were home alone sitting in the kitchen when her daughter suddenly exclaimed Who's upstairs? I can hear footsteps. Mrs. Viner then looked up at the ceiling and agreed that she could also hear footsteps and put it down to it being an old house making strange noises. After a few seconds, the footsteps got louder and Mrs. Viner realized this was not the old house settling but genuine footsteps that were walking around the upper floor. Florence Viner was taking no chances and immediately went to the bedroom and came back with a .22 revolver that she kept in a drawer in case of intruders. The moment she returned to the kitchen, they then heard two heavy thumps upstairs, which sounded like two heavy objects being dropped on the floor, and then everything fell silent. Florence and her daughter were much too frightened to go upstairs to inspect what should have been an empty room, and waited till her husband arrived home. Florence and Charles then walked upstairs to inspect for signs of an intruder, but found nothing out of place or any sign there'd been an intruder. However, a few days later, the exact same pattern repeated itself, starting with footsteps of someone walking up and down, as if agitated and ending with a loud thump and then abrupt silence. The pattern repeated itself every night where each eerie sound was identical to the last. It happened so often that the family slowly became desensitized to it. However, whenever guests stayed over, the following morning they would complain about the regular footsteps in the corridor. On one occasion, Florence's mother, Ida Benoit, came downstairs proclaiming, I'll never sleep in this house again. Why, it's haunted. Someone kept walking through my bedroom. One year after moving in, Florence decided to start renovating the large upstairs bedroom, which was the room that many of her guests stayed in. It was a warm September day. Now she was painting the window and singing to herself, thinking nothing of the unusual disturbances that had been occurring. The room suddenly turned icy cold and became so intense that she started shuddering and was forced to wrap her arms around her body to stop herself from shivering. It was so cold that it felt as if she was standing outside in a midwinter blast, but at the exact moment she felt the presence of another person standing next to her and then felt a surge of hatred come over her. Although petrified, she knew she had to turn around and confront whatever it was that was gripping her in total horror. Paralyzed with fear, it seemed to take an eternity to even move a muscle. Then, at that moment, she felt a freezing cold hand touch her on the shoulder. They were obviously trying to get her attention. After much courage, she quickly spun around and the cold hand suddenly dropped away. Expecting to see some sort of ghostly spectre, instead Florence was staring at an empty room and ran to the door screaming. She then turned and faced the room and screamed out, I don't know who you are or what you are, but you will not drive me out of this house. She then ran down the stairs and onto the porch 
and felt relieved when the daughter arrived home from school. Florence later stated that the evil in the bedroom had been so overpowering that she rarely entered the room. She said to her husband that she could not stop thinking about the icy hand on her shoulder. The Viner family refused to be driven out of the house and over the years gave birth to two sons and a daughter. In 1958, their oldest daughter Sandra left to go to college and she had only been gone for three weeks when even stranger events started to happen. One night she was sitting in the downstairs living room watching TV with a farm worker named James Latham. Her two sons and baby daughter had been in bed for many hours when all of a sudden they heard a huge explosion coming from the direction of the baby's bedroom and she quickly ran to the room. As she entered, she found it icy cold, as if she was standing in a fridge. In the baby's room, there was a door that leads to a hallway that is always kept closed, but on this occasion, it was wide open, as if it had been pushed open with force. She could see that the lock was now bent, and the radiator that the door had opened onto was now reverberating from the door hitting it. Fortunately, the baby was not harmed, and Florence figured that the oil burner may have blown up and raced down to the basement to check, but found everything was normal. She then returned to the baby's room, and some strange inner feeling gave her the impression that the unusual phenomenon had something to do with the presence of a young girl. She tried to rationalise this feeling, as there was no young girl living in the house, but she did remember the tragedy of the missing Dupree girl and could not shake off the feeling that a young girl was somehow the cause of all the disturbance in the house. One night, her sister was with her in the living room downstairs, when they suddenly heard a loud crash coming from the empty bedroom upstairs. Florence went up alone to investigate and found that a heavy table in the room had been overturned, which it certainly could not have done by itself. Florence was now extremely concerned because up till now, Footsteps and other disturbances have been relatively minor, but if an unknown force could now overturn a heavy table, it might start harming people. Up till now, what had been a bothersome spirit had escalated into something more powerful. She discussed with her husband whether it was now time to leave the farmhouse for the family's safety, but they again refused to leave, as they had put so much work into the house. Mrs Viner even had a speech ready in case you should ever encounter the spirit, stating that it was their house, we purchased it and have restored it and do not intend to leave. Go away and do not hang around, it's no use. She would often rehearse the speech she would give to the entity, but it never appeared to her. Although the spirit never showed itself, it continued to walk around upstairs, followed by the heavy thumps, just as it had always done, at the same time every evening. When she thought deeper about the nightly disturbances, she came to the conclusion that it was reenacting some sort of tragedy and that her family were hearing an echo of a distant past, like a residual haunting. But then she remembered the icy hand grasping her shoulder in the room on a warm September day and the way it caused the heavy door to swing open with such force that it bent the lock and more recently, the heavy table being overturned. This was no residual memory, but a malevolent spirit with a mind of its own that was trapped between two worlds that was condemned to repeat whatever tragedy had occurred in the past. What a horrible fate, thought Florence, and for a few moments felt compassion for whatever was causing the disturbances. Mrs Viner continued to bring about improvements in the house and decided to put up new wallpaper in the upstairs bedroom as the current paper had badly faded and needed to be replaced. After she had pulled down the old paper, she stood back and observed what would have been the original boards of the house, where the wall had now been exposed to light for the first time in many, many years. Florence then stood back and could see what looked like paint spatterings and went downstairs to get some rags and a bucket of water. When she returned and set to work washing it, she found the paint turned to a bright red colour, which she could not remove. She then applied bleach, which turned the red colour to a dark brown. It was at this stage that Florence realised that the red stains were actually spattered blood, and that something horrible had once taken place in the room. 
she felt she had finally got her first lead into the origins of the strange phenomena that had haunted the family for years, and it appears that somebody in the room had been killed. But who and why? She went into the village to speak to some of the older local people who had known about the history of their farmhouse. She found that when the farmhouse had been a tavern around the turn of the 19th century, there were two men who stayed at the tavern as guests. There was also a young woman who worked at the tavern, and she had attracted both of the men, resulting in arguments and jealousy. This in turn led to the men having a fight in one of their rooms, which was quite possibly the girls' room. It appears that the young woman could only look on as both men, armed with swords, would take each other's lives, resulting in blood being spattered throughout the room. It seems to Florence that the noises they were hearing could very well be the violent acts of the fight, followed by the heavy thumps as they fell to the floor, and the centre of this fatal drama was the young woman. Could the icy hand have been the young woman being angry with or trying to attract her attention? where in her mind she was reliving the horror. And what of the young Dupree girl who vanished and was never seen again? Could she be part of the hauntings? Florence would never know. The Viney family lived in the house from 1951 to 1961 and then sold her to a Mr. Beano, who for some strange reason never moved in. <laughs> 